So my name is Bruce Malado, I'm the director of the Institute for Collider Particle Physics. I'm a professor at Wits University and a senior researcher at Itemba Labs or the National Research Foundation. I'm a particle physicist. Uh, what we do is essentially look for new particles in the universe and we use artificial intelligence uh, to do that, to extract information from very large amounts of data in order to find uh, new particles, in order to find uh, new things that may point to new particles or new interactions in nature. So a particle physicist is a person, a team of people that uh, use the, the most energetic accelerators in the world in order to discover new particles and new interactions in nature. In nature, we've, we have the gravitational force, we have the strong force uh, that are well established and have been discovered a long time ago. Uh, but we know that there's something missing out there. We know that the universe is very complex and it's very big and we know very little of it. So we try to basically look at uh, nature from the point of view of its smallest constituent. That's what we try to do. And particle physics is at the bleeding edge of particle accelerators. So we use the most energetic accelerators to achieve that goal. Yeah, the Large Hadron Collider is the most powerful accelerator complex in the world to date. Uh, is uh, a bunch of magnets that sit about 100 meters below the surface of uh, Earth uh, in the boundary between France and Switzerland. Um, we, in South Africa, have a program that is funded by the Department of Science and Innovation and the National Research Foundation that allows us to travel to CERN and collaborate with international stakeholders and collaborators, with which we are able to train our students uh, in the bleeding edge uh, techniques in uh, detector, instrumentation, data analysis, particle physics, artificial intelligence, and bring that knowledge uh, to South Africa, which later is spread to other sciences or industry to help the economy grow in areas where um, highly skilled individuals are sought after. So let's use first the example of particle physics. So what, we, what do we do in particle physics? We have an accelerator that accelerates particles to very high energies, and those particles collide, leading to small explosions. Those small explosions are detected by detectors, which can be viewed as a very complicated camera, taking uh, many, many, many pictures per second, generating a lot and a lot of data. Um, that data is so massive that requires advanced analytics, requires sophisticated techniques, and artificial intelligence provides that ecosystem of techniques that allows us to navigate through that large amount of data. Now, artificial intelligence is something that can be used for pretty much everything where that has data. Whenever you have large amounts of data, artificial intelligence can come in in order to help you understand the data in order to help you learn from that data, in order to help you understand what the data is trying to tell you. And our team, as a matter of fact, uh, has been advising the provincial government of Gauteng as to how to deal with the management of COVID-19 in light of a lot of data. And uh, in order to be able to, for policymakers to act on the basis of evidence, on the basis of data, we have used artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence helps you understand something that the data is trying to tell you. The data has been produced. For instance, we had a lot of epidemiological data, a lot of social media data, a lot of mobility data, many different sources of data. For instance, what is a wave? When is a wave going to happen? What are we supposed to do when a wave starts approaching? When is a wave going to reach a maximum? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do we have sufficient healthcare resources uh, at peak? Uh, what is the influence of behavior on the evolution of waves? All those things and all that information is extracted on the basis of data with the help of artificial intelligence. Early on, I, I always liked mathematics and that kind of thinking. 
Um, originally, I, uh, I wanted to become a doctor, a medical doctor, but I realized that I had to memorize hundreds of bones and muscles, and I thought that was not something that um, I was good at. My memory is not good, uh, and I realized uh, later on that um, I'm better at analyzing, studying things, get information from sources, and understand nature. Um, not based on memory, but based on analytic skills, which is highly uh, mathematical. So as such, I decided to go into physics. I first wanted to become a nuclear physicist, um, but opportunities were available to me where I could uh, work at international laboratories uh, in particle physics. Uh, particle physics, in fact, comes from nuclear physics. Nuclear physics was the energy frontier decades ago, as the energy of particle accelerators became larger and larger, we basically became, uh, we, uh, we acquired the opportunity to look into smaller distances and smaller sizes, much smaller than the nucleus, and then particle physics was born. So as that opportunity was available to me, I became um, mesmerized by particle physics and the ability to study nature and as such I basically became a particle physicist and I still am a particle physicist I will hopefully retire as one. The most important and exciting part of the job is interacting with people, exchanging information, uh, working with people from all over the world, um, training and mentoring young uh, people, young South Africans um, and try to create a community of people that exchange information for the good of society and to me that is a, a major driver. Whether we do it in the context of particle physics or we do it in the context of helping with COVID-19, the reality is that we create an ecosystem of knowledge that is moving around people and with that knowledge we solve problems. So to me that's probably the most exciting uh, aspect of, uh, of my research. So the Higgs boson is a very important particle. In, in particle physics um, because it's a particle that is able to provide mass to elementary particles in nature and that's extremely important that it plays a pivotal role. It was hypothesized in the 60s, in particular 64, and it took almost 50 years to, to be discovered and in fact it became one of, it became my obsession for over a decade. I uh, moved to Geneva, Switzerland in the very early 2000s after graduating and, um, and that's really the only thing I did for uh, over a decade to devise techniques to extract the information necessary to discover the Higgs boson. It's basically the needle in the haystack including artificial intelligence techniques, big data techniques. It, it's certainly um, one of the most important discoveries in particle physics because it's not just a particle, there are other particles in nature or the fundamental particles in nature, but the Higgs boson plays a, a very, very, uh, you know, important role in that uh, we now know the origin of mass. What we can touch, smell, what's tangible to us is only a tiny fraction of the universe. Most of the mass is out there. And what our team does is to search for new Higgs bosons that could be linked with this uh, matter that we don't understand in the universe. So um, it's a very exciting time, in fact, because the Higgs bosons, the discovery of the Higgs boson opened a new era for us in that we now know how matter is uh, created in the universe. And that opens the door to discovering more matter. That's why the discovery of the Higgs boson is such a milestone for uh, fundamental science, because we have to solve complex problems. We work with electrical engineers to develop detectors. We work with computer scientists and software engineers to develop complex software to navigate through uh, data and a bunch of other fields that you need uh, to understand in order to develop the tools to meet the technological challenges of generating and processing vast amounts of data. When we were uh, called to help with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, we were put in a room, or in a virtual room, the room uh, with uh, experts of different fields. Domain knowledge is extremely important. We were sitting in a room with 
uh, epidemiologists, virologists, practitioners, doctors uh, in hospitals that understand the situation on the ground, that help us um, ensure that the mathematical modeling we develop is consistent with what's going on on the ground, that we're not creating some sort of abstract model that has nothing to do with reality. Uh, you need input from different um, uh, experts and different sources. In addition to that, of course, in our team we have applied mathematicians, physicists, computer scientists, software engineers, statisticians. Everyone has input uh, to ensure uh, that the quality of what we do is uh, the highest and that the mathematics and the artificial intelligence we develop is useful to solve the problem. Uh, so physics is pretty much everywhere in everyday life. Uh, whether you operate a TV set or a radio or a microwave or a cell phone, you're basically receiving and emitting electromagnetic waves and that is a physics problem in classical physics. And we can have thousands of examples of where physics comes in, where physics came in at some point to uh, uh, develop a device or a methodology that is used in everyday life. When we move uh, fast forward um, in time and we look at modern physics, we uh, at CERN, the European laboratory, uh, invented the internet. The internet uh, is essentially a bunch of protocols to exchange data that physicists um, thought it would be necessary to change information from different points on, uh, on the globe. People sitting in different countries and needing to exchange information. Uh, the internet uh, allowed physicists to exchange information while not being in one room. And uh, uh, already in 1995, the first protocols emerged at the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s. And in 1995, he made it to uh, the public in a white way uh, through the WWW and the rest is history. We know how important the internet has become in our lives and most importantly to exchange information, to broaden the scope of our ability to access information. It has magnified, it has enhanced tremendously the amount of information we process on a daily uh, basis. In life you have to have a passion. You, know, you need to have something you like, you love to do. Uh, you want to go to work to do something you love, you're passionate about. And science offers that opportunity. Uh, the academic world, the research world, is about going to an office and solving a problem. Going to an office and um, help people solve problems. And that's really what the essence of research and science is about. You have in front of you a new reality, you have in front of you data, uh, that is a reflection of that reality and you want to understand what that data is trying to tell you. You want to understand what nature is trying to tell you through that data and that means constantly solving problems. But in the process of doing that you are enjoying the fact that you are solving a problem because you are passionate about it and I would strongly encourage everyone uh, that is passionate about asking questions and understanding your surroundings to do and uh, do research and fundamental science, going to do research and uh, walk that path with other researchers. Um, it's very rewarding and it's a lot of work. You basically, uh, it's not something you do because you have to do it, it's something you do because you want to do it and you basically uh, try to spend all the energy you have into solving a problem and when the problem is solved, you've made a breakthrough in understanding the problem, there's a lot of satisfaction that comes with it.